Okay, uh, welcome to lesson four on population policy um, in our series of IGCSE biology. I mean, sorry, in our series of IGCSE geography um, with uh, Mr. Matthew. Okay, good. So without wasting so much time, let's look at um, the case uh, learning objective is to describe and evaluate um, different population policies. And we have two policies that we are going to be looking at. So next um, here we have the keywords. So you can actually pause the video now and read through these keywords uh, to understand the meaning of what natalism, a policy, a pro and inter. Now, um, let me just run through it quickly. Anti means a person who oppose uh, a particular policy, uh, activity or idea. Then pro, a person who upholds it. Policy is a cause or principle of action adopted or proposed by organization or individuals. Then natalism is an attitude or policy favoring or encouraging population growth. Um, so quickly, um, policies definition. Now, definition, uh, a policy is usually um, a measure taken by the government to influence the way its population is changing. Now, there are two types of population policies. We have the anti uh, and pro natalist population policy, and we have the anti uh, natalist population policy. Pro natalist population policy is a policy that tries to increase birth rate and total fertility rate of a particular country. Now, you cannot force people to have children, so you have to offer things like incentives such as free education now and child care. So antinatalist policy is a policy that tries to reduce um, birth rate and total fertility rate. Now, let's look at the case study of Singapore, uh, on what we have, what, which operates a pro-natalist policy. Now, the background information of, about Singapore. Singapore is a developed country, so it's an MEDC that is found in Southeast Asia with a population of around 5 million people. So the total population in Singapore is 5 million people around that, that value. Now, for many years, the Singaporean government has believed that Singapore is underpopulated and has to try to increase its population. Now, so Singapore has one of the lowest total fertility rates in the world, standing at 1.1, which is well below the replacement rate of 2.1. Now, so around 36% of Singapore population is made up of foreign nationals. And in some sector like industry, 80% of the workers are foreign individuals. Now, so let's look at some key features about this policy. Now, to overcome worker shortages, the Singapore government has encouraged immigration. So people coming into the country. Now, but it is also trying to increase population through rising birth rate. So the government is doing this in a number of ways. The first way is that it has increased maternity leave by 50% to 12 weeks, and it will cover the cost of maternity leave for the first four babies. Now, these incentives means that uh, parents do not have to worry about the security of their work if they decide to have children. Now, the, gov the Singapore government is also increasing child benefit paid to the families. Example is, the government will pay money into special bank account of up to $1,000 for six years. Now, by doing this, families do not need to worry about the cost of having children and instead focus upon the benefit of having a successful and beautiful family life. Now, the Singapore government has also sponsored dating organizations and dating site to encourage people to get married earlier and start having children. Now, this policy has certain um, successes and failures. Um, let's, let's look at the successes of, the, of this policy. Now, first here is that the Singapore population is projected to rise to 5.4 million by 2025. So from 5 million to 5.4, so population has actually increased. Now, increased immigration level uh, due to increased need for skilled workers. Now, the proportion of permanent citizens increased from 74% to 82%. 
uh, from 2000 to 2009. Now, a slight rise in total fertility rate. So the total fertility rate increased from 1.8 to around uh, 1.9 uh, was experienced in initial years following the policy. Now, failure of the policy is that the policy is purely monetary policy, unlike uh, unlikely to work, giving us the main factor in changing social mindset. Now, increased fertility was just short-lived, and fertility and birth continue the general downward trend despite additional incentives. Now, some companies are not entirely accepting since small workforce means missing employees and uh, which are very important. Now, government attempts to change this mindset are seen as uh, overly controlling and uh, decision limiting now making them seem artificial or worsening the situation so the people uh, feel they have a right to not giving a lot giving birth to a lot of kids so uh, changing their mindset is really difficult now the second policy we'll be looking at is the uh, antinatalist policy uh, which has to do with china uh, the one child policy so quickly uh, the background information is that China currently has the largest population in the world, which stand at 1.36 billion. Now, China is the third largest country in the world, but only about 10% uh, of its area is good for arable farming. Now, much of the West is covered in mountains uh, and much of the North in a desert. So uh, they need enough space. Uh, which is not really readily available. Now, key features of the policy is that in 1979, uh, the one-child policy was introduced in China, and this policy provides rewards to couples uh, that agree to have only one child. So if you have a one, only one child, there are rewards for it. The policy is mainly in urban areas, as this is where you have the greatest proportion of young uh, people uh, who resident within the country. Now, additional health care subsidies are granted to one-child families, as well as priority in housing allocation, priority in education provision, priority in job and extra food rations. This is the incentives given to people who decide to obey and follow the policy. Now, the policy was strictly enforced, so it, it was done with a whole lot of force. And there were punishments for people who do not follow the policy, including things like fines. You'll be fined if you give birth to more than one kid. You will lose your job. Uh, you'll be removal of education, uh, human rights for children, um, removal of education and human rights uh, for children, and for women caught to be pregnant with second child uh, will be forced uh, to do an abortion and possibly sterilization can take place. Now, at the same time as punishing offenders, the government was also promoting the use of contraceptives and encouraging people to get married later to help drop the fertility rate. Now, there were some exceptions to the rule. Uh, family in rural areas were often allowed to have two children where uh, people needed to work on the land and some ethnic group were also allowed to have two children. However, some, this policy has successes and also some failures. Now, successes of the policy is that the total fertility rate has dropped from 6 to around 1.7. Now, uh, population, growth, population growth rate has fallen from the peak of 2.61% in the late 1960s to 0.65% in 2012 so the population growth rate has actually dropped now up to 2050 uh, millions of bet have been prevented since 1979 uh, now the availability of contraceptive has increased contraceptives has increased and also this has this means that the birth rate continue to decrease now failure slash limitation of the policy there have been criticism about human rights uh, not only about freedom, but forced abortion and sterilization. Female infanticides that has taken place where uh, the boys have been favored. 
This is because of the preference for male child and women are seen as bearers of children. Now, this has led to decrease in the proportion of young people leading to shortage of workers and having a lot of old people within the population. Now, the policy has been open to corruption. Example, many people have paid bribes to have extra children. Now, two-child policy has now been introduced since January 1st, 2016, due to increase in old dependent population. We'll look at uh, old and young dependent population uh, much more later in this series. So thank you. Have a nice day and uh, enjoy yourself. If there is any question, you can drop it at the comment section.